Has it already been a month and a half since Nvidia launched the RTX 30 series? Uh, they kicked off with the $700 RTX 3080, followed up with the $1,500 RTX 3090. And today we have the slightly delayed launch of the RTX 3070 for a mere $500 available for sale starting on October 29th. Or will they be available for sale that is? Because while you won't hear many complaints about RTX 30 series performance or aesthetics for that matter, Nvidia did a great job with the Founders Edition cards aside from this required power adopter dongle. There are plenty of complaints about actually being able to buy one with the 3080s and 3090s selling out instantly and then being scalped for ridiculous markups on eBay. While we are expecting there to be more 3070s available for this launch, we have no idea how many more, and unfortunately with the crazy demand right now, I don't have high hopes for things to go much differently this time around. But with that said, today I will be doing a gaming performance review of the new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Founders Edition, and finding out whether or not it's actually as fast as an RTX 2080 Ti. This time with bonus 1440 testing too. Excellent! Team Group's Dark Z series of DDR4 gaming memory features an aggressive yet stylish armored design with high performance aluminum alloy heat sinks to keep thermals in check. The Dark Z series uses specially selected high quality modules to achieve DDR4 speeds up to 3600 with XMP 2.0 support for easy setup, and kits are available in capacities of up to 32 gigabytes per DIMM, perfect for a gaming PC or a high end workstation. Click the sponsor link in the description for more. So as usual, you can jump ahead in this video for the benchmark numbers. There should be timestamps in the description and stuff like that. But I'm gonna quickly go over this card and my testing setup, starting with some details on the RTX 3070 Founders Edition itself. It's an all new custom designed card from Nvidia with the same aesthetic look and feel of the RTX 3080 and 3090, albeit in a smaller package measuring just nine and a half inches long. Once again, we have a flow through area towards the end of the card that allows air to pass straight through a finned section with two axial fans that keep things moving when it comes to airflow. I must compliment Nvidia again on the Founders Edition design here. I really appreciate how they've taken the functional element of the black heat fins that are all over the card and also made them quite visually appealing. It has a nice back plate on there too and some RTX 3070 accents. And the only real downside is that there's still this special power connector uh, that Nvidia seems to have placed in the worst possible spot. So I hope you like the look of this adapter dongle that it ships with because you're gonna need it until there's other solutions available. It also seems even less necessary with the 3070 since it only requires a single eight pin power connector, but they're sticking with it. Also worth noting, there is no light up GeForce RTX logo on this card or any lighting anywhere as there is with the RTX 3080. Uh, for some people that's a good thing and for some people that's a bad thing. Let's talk specs though. The 3070 is based on a different GPU than the 3080 and 3090. It's called the GA104 this time around and it's still built with Samsung's eight nanometer lithography and it has 5,888 CUDA cores, 46 SM units, and it ships with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM with a data rate of 14 gigabits per second. On paper, the 3070 actually appears pretty cut down if you compare it to the 3080 with anywhere from a quarter to a third fewer CUDA cores, SM units, memory bandwidth, and raw compute performance. But it also may come up with a win in the efficiency category thanks to that 220 watt total GPU power. I also have a set of GPUs for comparison numbers in this video as well, aside from the Founders Edition RTX 3080 and the MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 3090. We also have the RTX 2080 Ti represented by the Asus ROG Strix OC model. So it is running a bit faster than stock out of the box, but a clock speed that most 2080 Ti should be able to hit with just a light overclock. I'm also still keeping the RTX 2080 around, even though it was replaced by the RTX 2080 Super. And here we're showing the Founders Edition at stock to see how the 3070 stacks up against a card that was $700 two years ago. We have a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, also represented by an add-in board model, the Asus ROG Strix OC version. And rounding things out, we have the GTX 1070, represented here by the Galax EX OC Sniper, and AMD's current best card that you can actually buy for now in the AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT reference design. So this chart is showing the raw reference stats for all of these cards for your comparison. Note that the clock speeds for some of the cards I tested are higher because they're overclocked by the manufacturer and I'll show those speeds in just a minute. Moving on to my test setup though. All tests were run on this test system, sticking with my AMD test bed for now, which should be helpful in comparing Ryzen 5000 CPUs when they launch, but let's not get sidetracked. I switched to the 3950X based on popular demand. It is running 
running at 4.4 to 4.7 gigahertz with auto OC and PBO enabled and cooled by an NZXT Kraken X62 280 millimeter all-in-one CPU cooler. Again, here are the stats for the rest of the system if you'd like to take a closer look. Let's move into the benchmarks and here are the actual clock speeds I was seeing out of the cards while in use. Note that the OC versions of third-party cards like the GTX 1070 and RTX 2080 Ti are running with their out-of-the-box manufacturer overclock, so the base and boost values here are higher than in the spec sheet I showed you a minute ago. The 3070 had a higher peak frequency than the 3080 or 3090, hitting 2010 megahertz, but on average it ran a little bit slower when it comes to the GPU core clock at 1875. And now into my benchmark testing. First off, 3DMark Time Spy Extreme, which is a synthetic benchmark from 3DMark. It's a DirectX 12 test, and here the 3070's graphics score was about 1.3% slower than the 2080 Ti. It's a decent way back from the RTX 3080's score of 8897 as well though, which makes me wonder if the 3070's biggest competitor might be the time that it takes to save 200 more dollars to buy a 3080. Let's move into some actual games next, starting with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, which is a new addition to my benchmark suite. It's a beautiful game that lets you fly anywhere in the world, and while it is still a DirectX 11 title, the focus on detail and draw distance means relatively low frame rates. At 1080, the 3070 performs very well, and it actually even beats out the RTX 3080, but I suspect CPU limitations are part of the cause of this. 51.1 average FPS is 18% faster than the 2080 Ti here though, and be on the lookout for continued good performance at 1080 from the 3070. At 2560 by 1440, a resolution I left out of my last benchmarking videos, the 2080 Ti retakes the lead over the 3070, which was about 5% slower. Also note that you won't see RTX 3090 numbers in my 1440p slides. If you want to know why, then check out my RTX 3090 SLI overclocking videos. It should be pretty evident why I wasn't able to just grab one of those to slot it in and get the updated 1440 results. At 4K though, CPU limitation isn't a factor, so the relative performance becomes more apparent. But the 2080 Ti is once again ahead of the 3070 at 29 FPS, making the 3070 about 6.5% slower. Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding is another new title I've recently added using DirectX 12 and running at the very high preset. Again, at 1080, the RTX 3070 takes a lead over the 2080 Ti. It's about 7% faster here. But at 1440, the 2080 Ti takes a marginal lead of about 1.5% with 137.9 average FPS. And at 4K, the 3070 moves back in front, although again, by just a few points, about 3% faster here. And we'll have to see if these two cards continue to trade blows or if one is going to emerge as a clear winner. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is next. It's running in DirectX 12 mode and at 1080, the RX 5700 XT actually plays really nicely with the 3950X CPU that we're testing with scoring 139 FPS while everything else is limited to below 130. This only occurred at this resolution, uh, but here the RTX 3070 is still slower than the 2080 Ti by about 1.3%. At 1440p, the CPU factor becomes less of a factor, and the RX 5700 XT is back to playing with the 10 series NVIDIA cards towards the bottom of the stack. The 3070 again falls short of the 2080 Ti by about 1.5% here. At 4K, the 2080 Ti extends its lead by a bit more, and the 3070 is behind by a little more than 6%. And at this point, it's safe to say that at 4K at least, you're still going to have a better experience with the 2080 Ti than an RTX 3070. GTA 5 is our final DirectX 11 title. It's still a very popular game, although its longevity has kind of reached meme status at this point. But at 1080, we are CPU capped yet again with all of the cards performing within two or three FPS of each other, except for the GTX 1070. But it's okay, little GTX 1070. You, you still tried hard and you still have a place in our hearts. At uh, 1440p though, we have some stratification at the low and high end, but the 3070 and 2080 Ti are still within 1.2 frames per second of each other, less than 1% off and pretty much a wash. At 4K, things break apart even more, but the 3070 falls behind the 2080 Ti by 6% and doesn't manage to break the 100 FPS mark. Next, we have Doom Eternal, which is my only Vulcan title in this batch, and it is a game that's a lot of fun to play as well. It also scales really well, even at 1080p, and doesn't exhibit too much CPU limitations, which allows the RTX 3070 to grab a 5.3% bump over the 2080 Ti. At 1440p, the 3070 wins again, but by a little bit less. At 227 frames per second, it is 4% faster than the 2080 Ti. And at 4K, the 2080 Ti retakes the lead again, which is becoming a trend with these benchmarks, and the 3070 is once again 3% slower. Here's Battlefield 5 running in DirectX 12 mode, and this is so I can also turn on some RTX features for further comparison, which I'll be doing in a couple minutes. But looking at raw performance here, at 1080, the RTX 3070 is still behind the 2080 Ti by just shy of 2 
2%. In the 14.40 race, the 30.70 is still behind by 4.5% with an average frame rate of 119. And at 4K, the 2080 Ti is still in the lead with an average frame rate of 76.5, putting it about 5% ahead of the 30.70. Rounding things out with Metro Exodus, and it's going to be more of the same here. The 3070 can't quite keep up with the 2080 Ti, and at 1080 it's about 6% slower. Moving to 1440p, the 2080 Ti increases its lead with an average frame rate of 83.5, leaving the 3070 about 7.5% slower. And finally at 4K, the RTX 2080 Ti takes its most commanding lead out of any of the games I've tested today, coming in at 53.7 frames per second, which leaves the RTX 3070 in the dust relatively speaking, 8.8% slower. So there are my gaming comparisons, but once again, I wanted to test the performance of the ray tracing cores, the RT cores that handle ray tracing and tensor cores that handle AI, or more specifically, that's what accelerates DLSS or deep learning super sampling, which allows you to play a game at a higher resolution like 4K without the typical performance hit. There's still some of a performance hit, but it's just not as bad. Full disclosure here though, there are many games now that actually implement ray tracing and or DLSS support to some degree, and I'm only looking at two of them plus a synthetic, so just keep that in mind. This isn't a full picture. We'll start with 3D Mark Port Royal, which is a synthetic test from 3D Mark, specifically for ray tracing. I have a lot of experience with this test recently. Uh, this is just for some raw numbers, though, and again, I have to say the 3070 kind of makes the 3080 look pretty good. The 3070 is at 8131 points, while the 3080 is at 11,229, which is more than 38% faster. Then again, the 3080 costs 40% more money if you can buy them at their retail prices, so maybe that's intentional. Maybe that's right where it's supposed to be. The 2080 Ti still beats the 3070 here though, which is 9% slower. Now if you enable the ray tracing ultra setting in Battlefield 5, it looks really pretty and it doesn't kneecap the performance as much as it used to, but it still shows way fewer frames, bringing the 3070 from 72.8 FPS down to 36.7 FPS at 4K. That pretty much cuts the frame rate in half, which is a big ask for some pretty reflections and more accurate lighting, so let's see if DLSS improves things. With DLSS on, visual quality remains largely the same, but we get some frames back. The 3070 jumps from 36.7 FPS to 52.2, which is a nice 42% improvement and makes the game playable. Maybe not if you're used to a higher refresh rate than this, but it's definitely more tolerable. Metro Exodus, on the other hand, uses ray tracing for global illumination, which doesn't result in as much of a frame rate drop when enabled versus Battlefield 5's implementation. With ray tracing on at 4K though, the RTX 3070's frame rate dropped about 40% from 48.9 FPS down to 29.1 FPS. Let's turn on DLSS and see what happens. And with DLSS enabled, the RTX 3070's frame rate gets back up to 44.3 average frames per second, a nice 52% improvement, and another example of why DLSS is gaining popularity for high-res gamers who want to balance between performance and visuals. Here are some additional numbers from my testing for you to analyze. These are the peak temperatures recorded for each card across all tests. The 3070 stayed cool and quiet the whole time, only hitting 75C max. I'm not currently set up to do scientific sound measurements, but anecdotally, I did not notice the card making any sound during my testing. Just like the RTX 3080, it is great at maintaining very low noise. Here are my power draw numbers though, and this is where the story differs uh, quite a bit, I would say, from the RTX 3080 to the 3070. With the 3070, we have just 341 watts on average power draw for the whole system, and that's less than any of the 30 series or 20 series cards, and it even draws less than the 1080 Ti while handily outperforming it. It's actually right about the same power draw as the RX 5700 XT, while maintaining maintaining a big performance lead, so uh, let's hope that Big Navi has some big efficiency improvements too. There is a 650 watt power supply recommendation for the RTX 3070, by the way, but it does seem to be doing a better job in the efficiency category than its older siblings. And here's my summary that maybe a lot of people skipped to, and that's totally fine by me. Uh, these are my overall numbers, evenly weighted by game using the RTX 2080 Ti as the 100% baseline. Please remember that some of the tests at 1920 by 1080 were CPU limited, which is why there's more of a difference in performance for the higher end cards at 1440 and 4K. But right there in the middle of the chart is the 3070 right next to the 2080 Ti. The core matchup in this video, I think, and although it was close, the 3070 was slower in my tests at 1440 and 4K while well, it beats the 2080 Ti at 1080. So if you're considering an RTX 3070 or a 3080 and you're gaming at 1440, that means the 3080 would be about 20% faster at that resolution and at 4K it's more like 30% faster. 
And that makes this pricing chart just a little weird because I wanna say that a $700 RTX 3080 seems like a better bet if you're gonna be playing at resolutions above 1080p, like 1440 or 4K. But these prices could just be a pipe dream compared to what any normal consumer might actually have to pay if the 3070s are as scarce as the 3080s were and still are. So there it is, you guys, my launch review of the NVIDIA RTX 3070 Founders Edition. It's another beautiful design and the performance is good, but I can't help but feel less excited about this versus the 3080 launch a month plus ago. And why is that? Is it continued disappointment about the post-launch availability of the RTX 3080 and 3090? Did Nvidia shoot themselves in the foot again by comparing the 3070 so closely to the 2080 Ti when it fails to effectively beat the last gen flagship? And maybe people are more interested in what AMD's Radeon team has coming up now that Nvidia has shown more of what Ampere can do, and there's that big Navi launch on the horizon. It's probably a mix of all of these things, but for me, it's also that I feel I can't give you guys a good recommendation based on the price of these cards because I don't know what the price will be or when they'll be readily available in all markets for that promised price. So for now, we know what the performance is, but availability is still a big question mark. And until that question is answered, it's hard to recommend this card to people. I will post links to these video cards if I can find them and other important stuff down in the description. And let me know in the comments if you're gonna try to buy an RTX 3070 or if you were successful, if it's after the 29th by the time you're watching this. But that is all for this video, you guys. Closing reminder to check out my store at paulshardware.net for merch, shirts, pint glasses, mugs, and other thumbscrew related items. And of course, uh, hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing to my channel if you extra, extra enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys next time.